and this is the page that they would see before they sign in. Now, on this page, I'm just going to point out the this is the training environment that we're using, and the training environment would typically reflect the live environment. So, if this were the live environment, if you were to scroll down on this page, there'll be some live information regarding these um uh this bits of information on here and labor market information, etc. But we're going to go ahead and sign in. So we're going to select the sign in option on the top right. And usually, if you've already created an account, you would log in here with your username and password. But remember, I'm a job seeker and I am creating an account for the first time. So I would scroll down to option three and I would select the individual registration option. I'm an individual. That's who I'm called right now or I'm ref um, referred to at this point. I'm an individual in the system. So I'm going to select register individual. Okay. So I'm going to sign in again because I timed out. So hold on. Wonderful. Okay, let's do that again. Here we go. So now at this point, the job seeker is going to see some information that they have to read and agree to. In the training environment, it's not there right now, and the privacy agreement and so on, and they're going to hit agree, and it's going to change the screen to allow them to start registering. Now, the system thinks it takes a minute sometimes, so it's you got to give it a, a minute to change the screens, okay? So the first page is the login information page. And if you notice to the very top of the page, you're going to see all of the different sections of that registration. And we're going to be starting with the login information, then you're going to go to the name, residential address, etc. So let's go ahead. And the first thing is going to want you to do is to create a username. So I'm going to remember I'm pretending I'm a um I'm a job seeker, so I'm going to create something here username and there is a criteria for the username it tells you what the allowable characters are and, and how many and so on i am going to be putting in a password okay let's see if that works All right, and it's going to ask a security question. And you put in the response, um, the pin ID. We're going to skip over that for now because that really isn't applicable to us as yet. Um, and the next section is going to be the social security number. Now, I wanted to say at this point with the social security number, this is a required field for the job seeker. However, we do not require it to provide services. And if for some reason the job seeker does not want to provide that to us, the only way that they can continue registering is to call in to have a staff member register them because uh, only um, staff can bypass this field. Okay. So let's go ahead and put in a social. Okay. So our primary location is here in the US. It's going to ask for their zip code and it's going to ask if they're authorized to work in the US. Now, if they were to choose no, there is going to be a message that's going to pop up. You are not authorized to work in the United States because you have not met basic eligibility requirements. You cannot continue with this registration. So you're going to hit OK. But actually, this is the work authorization field. If the customer answers no, it will give a message. However, we are currently working with GEO on making updates to this due to new guidance that we have received from USDOL to allow them to register, but no, not necessarily allow labor exchange services if they are not authorized to work in the US. But for now, we're going to choose yes. If there is an email address, they can put it in there if they do have one. Also, it gives them the option to create one if they don't have one. Now we're going to go to the demographic information section. We're going to put in the date of birth. So 
see how it shows you what you put in December 12, 2002 in, in text so you'll know exactly what you have written in there in case you made a mistake. This person is 21 years old. Now for the gender field, if you choose male, then the selective services question next is going to be needed to be answered. If you say, oh, so and if you're a male and you're not registered, it does give you the option to go to that or the link, I should say, to go to that site to be able to get you registered or to look around and see what's needed. But for now, for the sake of training, I'm going to choose female. And once you choose female, it's going to get grayed out. Okay. So I'm going to hit next. So my password is invalid. So I'm glad that this is happening. So what happens is that the screen would not change if there was some sort of um, mistake or error on the page. It won't let you go to the next. It'll tell you what the error was. So you can go there. My password isn't valid. So I'm going to try something else. See if this works. Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, spelled word. Okay, so let's look at the rules. It says has to be eight characters, must include one uppercase. I'm going to try something else. Let's try that. And it's case sensitive, so you got to make sure you're putting it in correctly okay told me it's a strong password let's see if that works all right okay so now it takes took me to or it takes the job seeker to the next page they're gonna have to put in their name <clears throat> and if you notice the fields in the with the red asterisk are the mandatory fields, so I'm going to try to enter um, enter those, okay? Takes a minute to think and process. Now it's asking, are you homeless? If I had said yes, it's going to give me a little message stating which addresses I can use if that were the case, but I'm going to say no. It wants my address. I'm going to put an address in here. And because I had put my zip code in, it populated those fields and where that the city for that zip code. Now, this was the residential address. Now it wants the mailing address. For some people, the mailing address is different to the residential address. If that's the case, they'll put whatever that mailing address is in there. But for now, I'm going to choose to use the same address. So I'm going to check the box. If you see this uh, message coming up, address has not been standardized. All that means is that the address hadn't been recognized by the USPS. So I'm going to hit next. It wants a phone number. And the phone number, which is it? Is it a cell phone? Or what type of phone is it? I put that it's a cell phone. It does give you the options for an alternative phone. Um, and the ones if you want to choose the different phones, if you would phone if you were to be wanting text messages and so on. I'm going to leave those blank and I'm going to hit next. Now it's asking you how would you prefer to be notified if we were to communicate with the job seeker. You can choose any one of these uh, options once you had populated those fields. I'm going to choose internal message because it's going to be taking those messages to the message center here, and I'll be showing you where that's located a little bit later on. They're asking, where are you accessing the website from? I'm going to say home, and I'm going to hit next. 
Now it's asking for citizenship. If you had chosen, if you're a US resident, for example, it's gonna want additional information like your USCIS number and so on and the expiration date. Um, but for now, I'm gonna choose that this job seeker is a citizen. Then it's asking if you have a disability. If they had chosen yes, then it's want, gonna want additional questions. For now, I'm gonna choose no and I'm gonna hit next. They want some education information. I'm going to choose this job seeker had one year college or technical vocation, but of course they could be choosing whichever is relevant or pertinent to them. And it's asking if they are attending school. I'm going to say no for now, and I'm going to hit next. They want some employment history. Now, sometimes if you have um, folks that are just coming out of high school or coming out of school with no employment information, they do have that never worked option, but for now, I'm going to choose that this I did have a full time employment in the past with a private business owner. And then this question, the unemployment eligibility status, I'm going to choose neither claimant nor exhaustee. And what I want to point out at this juncture is in each one of these screens, you're going to notice that there's a question mark at the top right. If what this does is it explains the um what is on that page so for example if i were to select it and uh see what's on there it's showing me what all of these um what all of this means and you see like it says neither claimant or exhaustee it's telling you what a claimant or exhaustee is the definition of those in case you're not sure if you're currently looking for work i'm going to put yes this is not a mandatory field, but I'm just going to put no because I don't have any. This job seeker doesn't have any related licenses or certification. It's asking within the last 12 months, have you received a notice of termination or layoff from your job or received documentation that you're separating from military service? I'm going to choose no. The next question is regarding uh, farm working. These are for the migrant seasonal farm worker questions. If they want to, this is where they want to identify if you fall into that category and you're um, eligible for that program. Um, if you say yes, then it's going to be generating other questions as well so that it allows the system to identify if you are eligible for that program. But for now, I'm going to hit no and I'm going to hit next. Now, I want, this is where the job seeker has to put in what type of job they're looking for. What is your desired job title? So I'm going to choose chef. And if you notice when I'm putting in the job title, it generates some options for you to choose which one of these so we can narrow it down a little better. I'm going to just choose the top one. And for the next question, I'm going to just select chefs and head cooks. And what that does is that it assigns a code to that job title and you're going to see why a little bit later on okay so now it's asking ethnic origin are you hispanic or latino i'm going to put information not provided the race question these are all the options i'm going to choose i do not wish to answer is asking me if I have limited proficiency or difficulty in speaking any other language or understanding English, actually. If I were to say yes, then it's gonna ask me some additional questions to identify what the languages that I do, I do, I am better proficient at, but for now I'm gonna say no, and I'm gonna hit next. Now for the military questions, it's asking me if I'm the spouse or it's asking the job seeker if they're a spouse of a military or caregiver of a US military member. I'm gonna say no. Then they're asking, are you are currently or currently in the US military or a veteran? I'm gonna say no. And I'm gonna hit next. Now it's asking some public assistance questions. Uh, has your household received temporary assistance for needy families? I'm gonna say no. Have you received food stamps? I'm gonna say no, or SNAP, formerly known as food stamps, I should say. Have you received general assistance payments? I'm gonna say no. Have you received refugee cash assessment payments? I'm gonna say no. And have you been supported by the state's former foster care system? I'm gonna say no. 
And for this next question, I don't want to provide any more household information. So I'm just going to select and check that box so the area gets grayed out. And that's it. The next option is going to be finish. So it's processing all of that. So now it gives you the message. Congratulations. You have successfully registered. What would you like to do next? Now, there are some options here that you can choose and choose these links to go to whichever option you want to choose. However, what I'm going to do now, because I'm a job seeker and I'm, you know, my focus, let's say, is looking for a job. So the first thing I might want to do is to create a resume. Now, if you're not sure what you want to do, you do have other options that you can do some more explana uh, exploration. But for now, I'm going to choose Resume Builder. And what that opens up is this is called the Profile section. And what this is is two columns of links that will take you to any part of the account. If you look at each one of these, this is where the job seeker, you know, if they want to go to any one of these areas, this is a quick link or this provides a quick link to those areas. But for now, I'm going to, we're going to go to resumes. And if you notice, resume is highlighted or it's in red. If you click on any one of these uh, options or links, wherever you're at, it turns red. So if I want to go to general information, if you notice, it turned red. But for now, I'm going to want to go to resumes. And usually, if you, you know, on any site and you click on a link, it, it, you know, it automatically changes the page and you, you know, see whatever you click, you're selecting. But with this system, what you do have to do is to scroll down to see what you had selected. It doesn't change the page automatically. So when we scroll down, there we go with the types. It's we're in the resume tab and it's giving you or showing you the options of what we can do next with a resume. You can either create a resume up, up, or upload a resume. Now, if you had um, a saved resume on your desktop, um, you could upload it. But for now, what we're gonna demo is the creation of a resume. So I'm gonna choose that option. Okay, so this is the page. This is what the first page that you're going to um, be on when you choose that option and the resume title. Let's just say, okay, so I want to name my resume. I'm looking for a chef position. So I'm just going to name it simply chef. Okay, I'm going to keep it simple and you're going to scroll down. What method do you want to use? Now I'm going to choose the quick method. You can use the wizard method. It does take a little bit longer. But for now, for this for training, I'm going to choose the quick option and I'm going to hit save. So what comes up is an image of what the resume would potentially look like. That's the title of the resume there. It shows the person's name or the job seeker's name and their address and so on. And they had pulled this information from the registry when they registered. Okay. Now, if you notice to the top, to the top, it says there's a percentage, 36%. It says that it's incomplete and it's offline. So what the 36% means is that 36% of the resume has been completed. Um, and if you were to want to see what that means, I'll click on it in a little bit, but let me go first to the fact that it says it's incomplete and it's offline. So what we want to do here, we want to add information to all of these areas of the resume so you just hover over it it turns gray click on objective if i want to add an objective and the good thing about this system is that you're gonna you probably could create your own objective but it does give you an example of what you might want to put on there so it says so if i were to click on the insert occupation sample text it says a position in the hospitality industry with an emphasis on food and drinks preparation. So you can keep that, put your own, elaborate on it. You can do any one of those things. It's up, going to be up to you. But I'm going to keep it and I'm going to hit save. So that populated in that area. I'm going to choose the ability summary. It's the same thing. I'm going to include the sample text that they put on there and the same options you can delete it put your own or you can elaborate on this whichever you want to do i'm going to select save 
it does want an employment history. So this is where you would add, if you look before, where you'd add your employment history. So I'm gonna choose add employment history. And let's just say, where, would, where did I work before? I wanna put in Olive Garden, let's say. And if you notice, it brings up Olive Gardens in different areas. So I could, you could look at which one is it that you were in and you can choose that. It's going to populate the address in the, uh, in the address area. Okay. I chose the one in Dawsonville. What was my job title there? I was a chef. Okay. And I'm going to choose, just choose simply chef. I'm not going to choose any one of these yet. Cause I'm going to, I'm wanting to keep it simple. So when we're doing job searches later on, it's going to generate as much, um, possibilities as possible so we'll be able to see those now the occupation is the same thing i'm going to put it in the category of chef chef and head cooks and it assigned that code again now this position was regular full time 30 hours but of course the job seeker is going to be choosing whichever is relevant to what they did i started working there january 12 2020 let's say or you can choose today, or whichever is applicable. You can choose you're currently in, employed there if you're still there, or they want to know if you're not, why did you leave, or what was the reason for the separation? I'm just going to put job ended. And the last day of work was December 31st, 2022. Okay. Now it's asking for a description of the job duties that you performed while you were there. You can populate this field if you wanted to with your own test, uh, text, but it does give you um, occupational descriptions if you were to choose that option at the bottom of the text box. And you can choose either one of these. I'm gonna choose the summary and I'm gonna hit submit and it gives you a little uh, example of what you could put in there. Um, but like I keep saying, you can elaborate on it, put your own or keep what they put on there. I'm going to hit save. Now it's telling you, you can add skills at this point, um, but I'm just going to move on. All right. So it's showing me what I chose. You can add more if you had more um, employment history to add. This is where you could go ahead and continue adding more employment history, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm going to hit save. Education history is wanting you to add your education. I'm going to put, uh, I qualified, I have one year of vocational school. I did culinary arts. And like I said, I'm just putting examples of what it could be. I went to Lanier Technical College. Okay, you can put the city and so on. It's not mandatory, so I'm going to leave it blank. It's asking if you're currently attending this school. I'm going to say no. And it's asking for your graduation information. It's Or if you want to put anything regarding what happened while you were there, it gave me this when I inserted the sample text. Like I said, you could keep it, leave it, save it, put something else. All right, and if you had additional education history, you would go ahead and keep adding that there as well. But for now, I'm just going to move forward. I'm going to hit save. And you see how it's this option here changed to complete. So even though we didn't go through every single one, it said complete. However, if you're noticing, it just it, it only says 39%. So you're asking, well, how could it be complete? And it's only 39%. But what this actually does is it shows you what's it you could click on it to see well how could you improve it or bring it up to more than 39%. So if I selected it, it shows me view the areas that you could improve your score. Now the thing is is that really it's going to be impossible for you to bring it up to 100 percent because there are things that you may not want to add on there, like your references and you know other job skills. You may not want to put all that, but you do have the option to click on that option to see what they're referring to when they're saying it's just 39%. What I would advise is that when you scroll down some more, there are some other areas down at the bottom with these little triangles or with an exclamation point. I would want to put in my salary 
I want to work for no less than $14 an hour. And what it does here, when you're choosing the salary, it does give you a link here where you can view labor market wage rates. So if it is that you wanted to look up what's the going rate for chefs and head cooks, you can select that link and see that whatever you're choosing is going to fall within the range of what's in within the range of what's being paid. If you want to choose where you want to work, you can add a location. I this person wants wants to work in Georgia. I can just select Georgia, or you can select to choose by zip code. I'm just going to hit Georgia anywhere in Georgia, and I'm going to hit save. Okay, I don't want to add my driver's license. All of this, all of this is you know, just as long as you put the salary and so on, that should be enough. So what I'm going to show you at this point is now I'm going to make or this job seeker is going to make their resume online and viewable to employers. So what they would do is select this offline option, choose online, hit OK. It's going to give you another message. It's going to let you know that you're choosing to make your resume available and to register with employment employer representative for them to view it online. You're clicking OK to agree and there it changed to online. So now what this job seeker has done is that they've made their resume viewable to employers and made it online. Now, another thing I wanted to point out to you at this right now is that there are sometimes that there well, the job seeker does have the option to decide what they want uh, viewable on their resume in terms of private information. So what they, you would do is select the area that has their name. This uh, page is going to pop up. And if you scroll all the way down, it's going to show you these box that are, these boxes that are checked are the information that displays on your resume. If you prefer to not have your phone number or your address on there or your, not the full address, just the city and state only, you can select these options or deselect these options and it's going to uh, update on the resume. But for now, I'm going to leave it all. I'm going to hit save. And there we go. Okay, so I kept my name and, uh, and all of the information on there. All right, so now that we've completed the resume, what are we going to do next? When you complete the resume, if that job seeker scrolls all the way down, what's going to show is this carousel of jobs that got generated automatically based on the content of the resume. So at this point, they can look at these jobs. It's, you know, there's chefs and chef de cuisine. You're going to click on each of these. It's going to move and show you which ones that were generated and the circle, the entirely blue circle shows that it, it matched. So let's just say I wanted to look at one of these jobs, okay? You can either view them, save them or share them. I'm gonna click on the job title, let's say of this position or this job. And what am I seeing? I'm seeing that this job is paying their ranges between 13.07 and 17.28 per hour. Now, if the employer had chosen not to display the salary for this position, what would have been on here? These figures that you would have been seeing on here would have been the um, rate, the going rate in that location for a, a job title, for that job title. But let's scroll down and let's look at this job. We are seeing that we matched 100% in the general job requirements. It's showing you, you know, some uh, information about the employer, the location of the job, the compensation and hours, work experience, what the um, education is required, skills, and so on. So if at some point you said, you know what, you know, I want to select another job or you want to move to another area, you can, but it does allow you to view the job. And if I, if I looked at it as a job seeker, I'm like, you know what, I want to apply to this job. So there's the option to apply to it at the top right here. So you can do that. Okay. Now let's go to, what we're going to look at next. Let's go to the dashboard. If you see all these 
um, icons up top here. They all mean different things, but for now, I'm just going to show you the dashboard. <clears throat> and what's on the Job Seeker dashboard? What's going to pop up is going to tell you what they're suggesting, the path that you could take. If you want to complete your profile, you want to create a resume, we already did that. If you want to complete five job searches and all of that, there's these options here. But I'm going to close this because I want to show you what's on the dashboard. Um, I'm going to view the full dashboard. And if they scroll down, what's at the bottom of the page are these widgets. These are shortcuts to all of these areas within the account. Um, this is where the message center is located in the widgets, but this is one of the areas I should say. And the cool thing is that you can, let's just say you want to be that one, you want that to be the first thing that you're seeing when you're scrolling down in your widgets. Anything that you want to grab and drop wherever you want it, you can move these around if you wish. Okay, so you can do that with the widgets. Um, and also, let me just see. I want to go now to show you where we can go to the job seeker profile. This is yet another area that you can navigate around or quick links to the account or the job seekers account. These are the links I was showing you earlier. So we have we've, we've seen two so far. We've seen the widgets on the dashboard. We've seen this these links in the profile section. And one more place is on the navigation menu, which is on the top left right here. If you were to select that, it's going to give you a drop down of all of these links for those options as well and more. So the job seeker can, can go in there and click on any one of these links where they can um, do some more exploration in their account. Now, there is no possible way that we can demonstrate all of these features in one sitting. It's not possible because there are so many areas in this um, in this system that allows you to explore. Um, what I do want to say, it looks more than it is, but it's really user friendly once you start using it and um, using it more and more. Because what it, you would what you would realize is that. These different areas are taking you to the same feature. It's just different ways to get there. So this is the profile section. You can go to the dashboard if you want to use the dashboard to get to a specific area, or you can use your navigation menu. Okay, let me just see one more thing. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to point out, let me just see. I wanted to show you on this profile page, if you were to choose the path option, what it brings up is two things I wanted to show you on the path. Um, there's a site called Allison, and this is a tool that can be used or a site that a job seeker can go to. What it does is there are videos and courses and classes and tips on uh, job searches and so on. And these courses and classes are all free. Feel free to go in there and navigate around and, and um, explore around. And also a virtual recruiter, if you want to create an alert to do your job search for you while you're not in the system, you can create that alert by choosing to create a virtual recruiter. And what that does is that, let me show you how it's done. You can create a new job alert. Let's just say you're looking for a job as a chef. I'm not going to choose any more of the filters because I wanted to generate as much as possible. What I do want to show you here, if you were to scroll down, these industry options that they can choose all of them, or you can deselect and just say, okay, I'm just, I just want to go in the education section or government section. But the preferred option, when you see the preferred employer, what does that mean? It means that those employers are employers who are registered within the WorkSource Georgia portal. So we vetted those employers, we verify their information, and they're you know they're legit however if you choose to not or you choose to you know still keep all of these other options we do spider jobs in so you are probably going to get results from employers that are not registered within our system so i'm going to hit the search button and i am going to see that it won't see the it's just saying it's sorted by relevance. You're going to see a list of jobs already created. But remember, I didn't filter it much. So that's why there's so many. 
But if you want to save it as your virtual recruiter, let's choose save. You're going to scroll all the way down. You want to name the alert. Okay, I'm going to name it my chef job alert. I want it to run daily. I want to put an expiration date. Uh, the message center, that's where I want the notifications to go to. I remember the notification page is on the message pages on the dashboard. So you got to come in there every day to check if you're wanting to generate this daily. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, and I just created a job alert. Okay, let's see. All right, one more thing I wanted to show you. Now, when I say sometimes the same feature appears in different areas, let's just say the assistance center, for example. See how it's here up on the right, top right of the page? If I were to go to the dashboard, it's within one of those widgets as well. Somewhere here. And also, if you were to want to go to the assist, here it is, assistance center, right here. Or it's also available here in the on the navigation menu as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the assistance and I'm going to open it up. And these are a lot of other options that you can explore as a job seeker. But the three things I want to point out to you to try to use is that if you have any questions, you can email us your questions, contact us directly, or the learning center is a really good tool to use if you wanted to look at how to use the site and so on. These are courses that are given to individuals. There's also some the staff if staff wants to go in there. And it's actually videos for those of you know learners who prefer to watch a video or it's transcripted for those of you who prefer to read. So you can choose these options in here as well. Okay. Okay, so that's it for job seekers. I know there's a lot that I didn't go to, but then, like I said, for the sake of time, I showed you the most important parts of being a job seeker, creating that resume, doing that job search, or, or creating that job alert, and looking at the assistance center. So we're gonna pause here for a minute. Does anyone have any questions so far that they wanna ask? Now is your time. Hi, Bina. Hey. This is Ana Gonzalez. Um, mm -hmm. I have a question in regards to the resume. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when looking at the resume, you know how it has those sections like, uh, what was that, like honors and activities? Mm -hmm. If a customer does not have any honors of act or mm -hmm. activities that they can add to their resume, is there a way of removing that yes. section? Oh. Yes. Good question. Very good question. Let me go back to the resume. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I'm going to go back to the resume. So if you select the resume, if you select this toggle or the this settings option right there on the right, this one, it opens up a side section right here. What I would do is I could say, I'm going to save a template. I want to save it as a template, right? Once you hit the save as option, it makes these areas live. So what I can do is I can deselect these areas, like for example, if I didn't have a certification, like you said, I can deselect it, see how it's disappearing. I don't have any honors and activities that I want to include. And I didn't want to include my references because I prefer not to, or any additional information. So what I did was I deselected the areas on the resume that I didn't want to include. See how that worked? So all it has really is what I chose to display on there and what I can do, let me just see. So right, so it saved as a template and it didn't have those areas that you just asked. If you wanted to remove it, that's how you would remove it. Did that answer your question? It did, thank you so much. 
Okay. Anyone else? Good question, Anna. Anything else? Can you hear me? I have yes. a question about the resume also. So is the address required, the physical address, the residence required on the resume? Because I've been told that sometimes, like if a person lives in Cummins, Georgia, and they're looking for a job in downtown Atlanta, you know, it may be a hindrance or yeah. so. Yeah, I is the address required on the resume? That's my question. It's not a requirement. Whatever the job seeker chooses to display on their resume, it's up to them. I'm going to show you how to remove it if they wanted to, if they think that having their address on there is going to hamper their chances of getting a job somewhere else in Georgia or any other place. Um, but good question. It's not required. It's up to the job seeker what they want to display on their resume. Um, remember when we had selected the name and so on, it opened up this area. If they didn't want to include their, their address, they can just put, they can deselect the option. For, for the city of state only. Oh, if they wanted to include their mailing address, if they had something different on their mailing address. So if they only wanted to choose to show their name and phone. Let's see what that shows because I deselected residential address. Let's see what happens. See, there you go. So okay. all it has is their name and their telephone number. If that's what they choose to display on their resume as their form of communication. So they okay. can do that, but it's up to the job seeker what they want to keep on there. Another good question. Thank you, Faye. Anything else? If you, took, if you took everything off, if you took everything off the um the resume, it's going to display as confidential. Okay. So if she unchecks that. name and primary phone, yeah, then the employer that. can only contact them through the system. See. And it will show confidential. Yes. Thank but you. Can still yes. be contacted through the message center in the system. Okay, Faye. Did that answer your question, Faye? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Anya. All right, anything else? So we can move on. Okay, I would say we can go ahead and jump into the employers. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's move on. And if you think about anything else afterwards, we can always go back to any questions that you may have. Okay, all right, so. What are we going to do now? We are going to do the same thing that we did for the job seeker. We are going to go to the employer section and we are going to create an employer account. Just like if I were the employer, so it's going to be from the employer perspective and we're going to start off at the same area. We're going to hit. Well, I'm going to log out. Let's see what's going to happen. And I'm going to sign in because I'm the employer. I want to sign in and create that account as an employer. <clears throat> and I'm going to scroll down. Like, now, remember, if they already had an account, this is where they would have been logging in with their username and password. But they're going to scroll down to option three. And now, instead of uh, selecting the individual registration, which that's for the job seeker, we'd be selecting the employer registration. Now there's going to be some information for them to agree to. They're going to hit agree. Of course, being in the live environment, they would see what that agreement would be. And then we want to register or representative type. The employer is going to choose that they are the direct representative of your organization. So they could be the hiring manager, the owner, and so on. The third party, that's something totally different. You don't want to choose that, or they would don't want to choose that unless they're a TPA, but that's another training entirely. We're going to choose direct representative and hit next, or the employer is going to choose that and hit next. So 
by the time the employers web uh, trying to register on this site, by then we would hope that they would already have a federal employer identification number because we are going to require that. If they're a smaller company, you know, and they don't have an FEIN or there are in, uh, instances where that may not be something they want to use, they can use their social, but typically when we are verifying an employer account, we would want them to have or to, to share that FEIN with us, okay? So, let me just see, I'm going to choose. Yeah, in. I'm going to put one in there and I'm, and I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to, the employer has to choose a username. So I'm going to choose something. Just say my name is Brownie. My password. Oh, here we go with the password again. Yes, yes, sorry, Wildy. Okay, hold on. We try to choose the same thing with the password only because it gets to be so much when we are training. Okay, let's see if I put the right, the same thing in there so I wouldn't get an error. Yep, here we go. All right, <clears throat> same thing, security question and answer. What's the company name? So now if you notice when I'm starting to type in the company name, it's going to give me options to show whether there's another company already with that name in the system. So the name of my company is Yummy Brownies. I'm doing business. Now, if you're doing business as another name, this is where you would put that information in there if you're doing Business as something else, but I'm going to put the same thing. Oops, no. Yummy. Okay. Strong. All right. Then where is the business located? I'm going to put the zip code in there. <clears throat> See how I populated the city and so on based on the zip code. I'm going to put the address in there. And it's the same thing as a job seeker. If they have a different mailing address, they can put that in there or they can check the box that says to use the same address. Now, the contact information for this person that's um, creating this account, put their, they put their job title, their name, their telephone number, If they had an email address, I'm putting mine, but you can see. Um, and how would they prefer to be communicated with or receive notifications? And I'm gonna choose internal messages, okay? For the sake of training. I'm gonna scroll down even more. Now they want to register which industry their company belongs. So you're gonna to have to get a next code. So we're gonna choose, let's say it's a bakery. So I'm going to choose what's the best option that opens up, see, generates all of these options. And what they would choose is the one closest to what their, their industry is. Um, and it generated the code 7225. Okay. I'm a private sector employer. I'm not a federal contractor. I would be willing, I can't hire, I choose not to hire remotely. I would like to hire um, second chance. If I were to choose yes, it's gonna ask you some additional questions, but for now I'm gonna choose no. If the company had a website, this is where they would enter that information. If they wanted to choose any one of these options to identify their business, they can do that. And if they offer benefits and so on, they can choose those options here. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so after that, they put in all of that information, they are gonna get some reading, you know, what, you know, the eligibility of having their account with us and so on, um, discrimination criteria. I'm gonna hit next, they're gonna to have to read all of this information. 
uh, information from EEOC. They have to read all of that because they're going to have to be aware of what our limitations or criteria are when they're using our site. Okay, so now you've successfully registered and what would you like to do next? Okay, now me as the employer, I just created an account. So, and I know the reason that I'm creating an employer account is because I have positions in my company and I want to create a job order, right? So that's the first thing I'm going to want to do. So I'm going to go to the profile section where I'll be able to see that option for creating a job order, okay? This is it right here. And just like with the job seeker, there are two columns of links that's going to help the employer to navigate throughout their account. So first thing I'm doing, I'm going to go to job orders. Okay. I'm going to create a job order. So I want to add a new job order. Here we go. Select it. But, but this is what happens. If you notice, it says this employer's access rights prevents them from posting jobs. Now, I know I've gotten calls and emails from EF staff telling me that employers are calling them, asking why are they getting this message? You know, how come they can't post positions? Typically, once they see that message, it's because their account has not been enabled, enabled yet. Because when an employer creates an account, that account gets put into a queue in our system and that account has to be reviewed by staff. Staff has to go into that account, validate and verify their information, look them up on, see if they're registered in the state of Georgia and, you know, check out their address and their telephone number and look at the validity of the information that they put in there and then they're going to enable it. And it's only once the employer gets enabled or the employer account gets enabled they would be able to post positions. Okay? Thank you. All right. So what are we going to do in the meantime? In, you know, I'm going to have someone look at the account and see if it's, um, uh, they, they can enable it. So what I'm going to do while we're waiting for that to get done, I'm going to go back to the dashboard. Let's just explore around on the account. So in the dashboard is going to, have this message pop up. What do you want to do next? Manage your job applications or so on. I'm going to hit close because I'm going to want to show you. Let me see. I'm going to go to view the full dashboard and show you that the employer has the same things on their dashboard. There are the widgets with all of those um, shortcuts to which part of the account they want to go to. They can move their widgets around the same way that you would if you were the job seeker. <clears throat> the employer has the same options as well. Oh, I do want to view my profile. Let's go there. Same thing. We have those columns where they can use any one of these to navigate themselves around the account. And also, they have that navigation menu as well, where they can scroll down on this menu and choose where they want to go or what they want to look at. They want to manage their jobs. If they want to do some equipment services, look at some labor market services, EEO information, look at the communication center, go to their assistance center. So they have all of these options on this on their navigation menu as well so they can choose to go to the navigation menu to, to get there to use that option okay so let me see now what we have here under general information we do have the option to add contacts and users let's say they are the owner and they want to add a recruiter or they want to add someone to the account to have access to the account or other locations that they have they have another branch somewhere else in another city this is where they can do that as well so they can do it right here um and the profile section 
takes you to each of these options. They can also create a virtual recruiter to look for jobs for them, look for candidates actually for them as well. And they can set up that job alert. Okay. But what I'm going to do now is I am going to see, let's say, let's say, let's just imagine that that employer was enabled. So let's see if we can go ahead and create that. Not opening, come on, that job order, sorry. Let's see if they can create that job order. And because I want to show you what that looks like for the employer when they are creating their job orders. All right, so let's try it one more time because by now, usually it takes a couple of days, like three to four business days. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong about that for the job for the employer to get um, to be enabled. Staff, yes, yeah, staff works on those queues to try to get that uh, done as within that time frame. Ah, here we go. So I did choose to create the job order and it did let me in. So that tells me what? That tells me that the employer account was enabled. So let's go ahead and create that job order. So the first option at the top of the page, see how it's asking me if I'm an H2B employer? That's something different that has to be, you know, that's another session, that's another training. So for now, we are not an H2B employer. Uh, so we're not selecting that option. What we're gonna do is go ahead with the creation of the job. We're gonna choose the basic job order. Now we can do the custom, but for the sake of time, we're gonna choose the basic job order. And I'm looking, what am I looking for? Surprise, a chef, right? Because I wanna get matches. So I'm looking for a chef for my bakery. And I'm gonna to want to assign a code so I'm going to choose the occupation code, okay. Or you can search if it is that it didn't give you what you wanted. Let's just say you want to go in here and put in the word chef, and you said, okay, it's for a chef and head cook. I'm going to choose that option, and it's going to appear right here, okay. Also. Uh, with the agency ID. Sometimes some employers have job IDs assigned in their site or their company. And if they wanted to include that here, um, they can, but you know, we're not gonna put anything in there for this time. So we're gonna hit next. I think somebody raised their hand. Someone have a question? Yes. Hi, Bina. Uh-huh. Hi. Hi, this is Tracy Wilson. I was trying I was trying to um um, go, I was in the CRM last week and I was trying to pull up an employer. Uh -huh. It showed the employer was in there, but when I tried to, um, pull them up in the CRM, I got, um, an error message. Um, I, I, I have a screenshot. I don't know if I am able to post it here or not. Um, what did do you remember what the message said? Kind of just a, a brief description of the topic. Yes. Of your head? Uh -huh. yes. It says, um, Employer ID not found, right? Um, even though I could, when I typed in the employer in the CRM, I could see them in there, uh -huh. right? Um, and then when I went to assist a employer, uh -huh. uh, it says the account already exists. Uh -huh. uh, but so I just kept going around like in a circle between okay. employer ID not found and this employer already exists. Okay, whenever you come across they, anything like that, it, oh, sorry, go ahead, Wanda. It could be a conversion issue. That could be an account that we converted over. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, just send that to policy or to workforce yeah. and we okay. will review that. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that's that's right. So if ever you come across anything that, you know, you're getting some kind of weird messages regarding the employer, just mm -hmm. send it to us and we're going to do some investigation. Don't spend a lot of time on it trying to figure out something that, you know, we are the ones who would be able to fix that for you. So go ahead. Great. And Okay. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Bina. You're welcome. All right. So I'm going to go next. Any more questions? Not yet, right? Hold on. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to hit next. All right. So it's telling me uh, when applicants choose to apply with the online resume method, their resumes and detailed information will be displayed on the applicants tab of this site. So you just, it's just giving you a message. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead with the job details. Is it uh, remote work? I'm going to choose no. 
and I'm not, I'm one for second chance opportunity, but for the sake of training, I'm going to choose no, because it uh, uh, generates the, uh, other questions and I'm going to want to move on. Okay. Um, it's showing me the work site is incoming with yummy brownies. This is the contact person for that job and a brief job description. You can write a job description on your own, but like. Uh, for others, other uh, examples we showed, there was an, a sample text that you might want to include or give you an idea of what can be put in there. I'm going to choose the summary and hit submit and it populated text in the field. And like before, and I kept saying, if you wanted to elaborate on this, you can or delete it and put your own, you can or just keep it and save it. I'm going to keep it and save it. I'm going to move on. Foreign labor certification, we're going to put not certified because this is something entirely different. So we're not going to, we're going to keep those answers that defaulted to not specified. We're going to go down now for, we're going to choose the salary for this job. Okay. So what this is, is the system will provide the employer labor market information based on the job title or occupation code that the input, remember I was talking about that code. So I remember it's, it keeps assigning a code, right? So you saw that it will provide the employer, the percentile. So this allows the employer to decide on where they might want to set the salary in order to adver ad advertise a more marketable position. So the employer would have an idea based on that job title where they should start. So you see it have the 25th percent, median and 75th. Now, if they want to go and go ahead and do the lowest, you know, they can be prepared for not getting a lot of candidates for that position. So it's going to be up to them where they want to choose to begin and end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, see how when you do the drop down and you got to start at maximum because if you do minimum, it's going to give you an error. So I'm going to choose to have the maximum being median. And then I'm going to choose entry level for my minimum. So I'm choosing the range between 1307 and 1728. Now, if you want to, you can go up to experience. You can, um, but it's going to be up to the employer. Okay. That's the wage that they're going to pay per hour, depending on their experience. I'm going to leave all of that the way that it is. Um, you can make these options here, look at those and choose any one of those if they desire. The hours is not specified, shift isn't applicable. I'm going to leave all of that the way that it is. And you see how, remember I told you that the employer has choices when they are choosing to what to display on their job descriptions and so on. They are saying here, or they are asking, or they are letting the employer know, did you want to display your salary on your job order? So that was a pretty good at getting maximum wage. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to leave it at yes. Okay. So that might be an incentive to get more candidates. All right. So now I want to choose how I want the candidates to apply. It defaults to providing us with a resume online and uploading a resume, you know, in the system. This is recommended. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. But they do have other options if they want them to email their resumes or send it by mail or the fax phone or to apply on the company website. Of course, if they're choosing the website, they're going to have to put in the company URL. That's going to take them directly to that job application. Okay, let's scroll down. If you wanted to add, enter a brief description of the application process, you can. I'm going to skip that for now. These are skills that are listed with the job position. Um, this is the maximum of experience needed. Um, they're asking if there's a minimum age requirement. If you're choosing to populate this field with the age, then you'll have to say why you're asking for minimum age. Sometimes you might, it might be a job dealing with alcohol. And of course you can't hire, you have to hire people of a certain age. So if you're choosing to put an age limit on there, there's a drop down. It gives you reasons. You're going to have to choose one of these reasons as to why you're choosing to ask for a certain age. Okay. So I'm going to leave that blank because it's not mandatory. I am going to choose that. I want a year of technical college. This field has to be populated um, numerically. So you can put, if you want experience, I'm going to choose zero. 
Does it require a license or certification? I'm going to choose no. It's asking if public transportation is available at that area. I'm going to say yes. Do you require a driver's license? I'm just going to leave it at no. Then this last section here is asking if you wanted to have your job uploaded to the National Labor Exchange. I'm going to leave a check because, yeah, I want to put it on there, you know, and I'm going to choose to create the job. So it's thinking. All right, so it's job order number 34. And what it's giving you now is just a brief look at what you just create or they just created. Okay, so it's giving you everything that you just chose. If you want to edit any of it, there's an edit option at the bottom of the text boxes. So if you wanted to change anything, you can, or they can, the employer that is. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of this job and I'm gonna show you the employer is now going to see all of these options at the bottom. And they're going to say, okay, well, let me see what's going on here. Maybe I want to see candidates that are in the, that are in the system that matches this job. Oh, what happened? I selected candidates that match this job. Here's what it said. Candidate searches can only be performed when your company has an open job order. What does that mean? It means that we, ES staff has to look at those job orders and make sure that it meets our criteria for posting positions in our site. And we have, ES staff has to make that job open and available before it, it gets posted to the employer account. So not only is the employer accounts, uh, not only do the employer accounts have to be enabled and made um, approved by us, we also have to approve the job orders that are being posted on the accounts as well. Does that make sense? So we saw that uh, um, message that came up. So we can't, he can't look or they can't look yet to see who is on there that will match up to their job order. Okay. I have approved the job now, but you will have to return to your, uh, like if you scroll down to the bottom. Uh-huh. Yes. Go down to return to job orders. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to then go back to, to match against the job because okay. I've approved it now, but it won't let you do it from that page. Okay, good. So I'm going to return to job orders. Thank you, Rhonda. So what Rhonda did was she went into the account and she approved it. She made it open and available. It would have it would have been saying um placed on hold. Okay. So what do we want to do here? We want to okay, let's see. Match it. So I'm going to choose the job title again. Took us back to the same place. This is the job description, everything they had put on there on the job. And now let's see what happens. I'm going to choose to see if there are any candidates in the system that matches this position. And there we go. It generated results this time because the job order got approved. So now they would see a list of all of the people in the system that matched that job position. But the option that the uh, employer has is to message any of these any of these candidates that they wish to reach out to, so they can select. See, it's giving you a brief description of the um, the person. I think somebody raised their hands. Somebody have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, Bina, this is Hanoi. Mm -hmm. So, say Stephen Les. Uh, Leslie Stevens, mm -hmm. and you should select her. Are you only able to email them and not call them, or what are the options do the employer have? Okay, see how on the top right it says message? That's their option. So if I were to select just Leslie or multiple of them, what's going to happen is that when I select message, yes, it's only allowing you to send a message to okay. the job candidates. Okay. So it's going to okay. be up to the candidates to respond. So in, I just hit the word message or the in, option message. Sorry, did you? Yeah, so is that, so when they hit the message and they send it to them, is that going to their personal email message? I'm show you. Yeah, okay, thank you. you. Yeah. So it's gonna be, they're sending it to individuals. 
and see how it's giving you the options here, Hanoi and everyone else. It's it defaulted to internal messages. Okay, so yes, it is going to. It go will to display internal. additional. It will display additional options, but on this particular job seeker, they only gave us the option for internal message. But if the job seeker said you can mm -hmm. um, email me to my direct email address, that email will display. It will okay. allow you to email it to them. Okay, so it depends on what the job seeker chose as their method of communication is the options that it's going to get for these. Um, so maybe if I had chosen someone else and they had one of those options, that would have been there as well. Okay, so, it so if the phone number is on the resume, when they go to view the resume, they actually could call the person as well. It's okay. what the job seeker is displaying to the to the employer. Um, and if a job seeker has hidden their phone number. Now, the phone number won't display in the profile section, um, but it will display on that resume specifically if they uploaded it too. it will display to the employer. So they could call that person if they wanted to. Did that just make sense? So if they had uploaded the resume, even though when they had created the resume, they chose not to display certain information. But if the uploaded resume had the information on there, it'll get that will get seen. By the employer. Well, there's so also a there. different option with that upload, Bina. Yeah. But what yeah. I'm saying is, even if they didn't, um, if they created a resume mm -hmm. and they did not mark to hide that phone number, mm -hmm. it will display to the employer, and then it will also display on an upload. With an upload, there is a different option to hide the information, which we can oh, get into in a more okay. advanced. And I do have a quick tip for that. Um, for anyone who wants it, we did send it out to the title 3 staff, but, um, there is an option to hide it. I just want to make sure that that's clear that you can, the employer can see those phone numbers. If it's on the resume, it won't show in the profile tab. So, if Bina was on the other page where we had that listing of people, when you click on the person's name, it will display a whole set of information. It'll show their profile and it will show, but it's only going to show specific information. It does not show um, any of the um, go back. categories and all that. Um, it will just show. No, no, click, click on the. Click on the person's name in the square. Click on that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see. No, I guess, of course, yes. Yes, when you click the whole, you choose the whole option, it's going to display the information for that person. And that's how the employer is going to decide, okay, yes, I, I want to reach out to this person or this person or, you know, by clicking on the square itself or the area itself is going to display information that they would make them or would help them to decide which one of these that they want to send a message to. You see the tabs are right there. Over to your right, you have overview, qualification, skills, driver's license, references, and resume. That's where they're going to be able to get individual details. So if you click on resume and that person did not hide their phone number on the resume, then it will display. There we go. Okay. So it is on there. All right. Thank you. All right, thanks, Rhonda, for that reminder. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's just say the employer said, okay, I'm going to want, I, I want to send a message to Leslie and to Bubble Bath and to Ad Libby. Um, I'm going to send a message to them. And it, after reviewing what they wanted to review on all of those uh, candidates that they were looking at, see the three people came up. They're individuals. And what it did, it, it populated a subject, invite candidate to contact employer, and the message populated in there automatically. We found your resume on Resource Georgia website and think you would be a good match for chef position, open position we have. Please contact us at the following to coordinate a date and time for your interview. So they're going to get this message in the message center those candidates that he chose or they chose, I keep saying he, and I'm going to choose or the employer is going to choose send and it's going to send that message to these candidates. Okay. 
Let me see. Am I forgetting anything? <clears throat> All right. So, job matches and so Does anybody have any other questions regarding this? This is this was good. I want to go back to that job order section. Okay, so on the the next thing that the employer can do on the job orders is that remember they have selected a job title to review it and look at job matches. Let's just say one of those people that they reached out to, um, they interviewed them and they hired them. Okay, what they would do is choose the status of the job in the job order section, and they would they could choose the option. To, that the employer filled the position or the position is no longer available. They can choose one of these positions that indicates the status of the job position on there and they can hit save. So they have the option to do that as well. Okay, in the navigation menu, they have options to manage their jobs. If they have multiple job orders, they can do that. We don't have multiple job orders in there as yet. So, you know, they can choose that option to go in there and manage their jobs, manage their candidates. See, when you manage a job, it's just the one coming up. But if they had multiple, they would be able to... Oh, one more thing. Let me show you. They can put application questions on one of these positions. They can choose to do that. Let's just say they wanted to do a little, create something that they want to ask the employer, uh, the candidates before they apply. Let's just say it's their question set name is chef. And the set instructions, they can, it, we're going to insert the sample test. The text, sorry, please take a moment to answer the following questions below. And I'm looking at the sample because it's giving you an idea of what you're going to put in there. This is where you would add the questions that you want to ask that person. What's the response type you want? Did you want yes or no answers, text answers, multi, you want to create multiple choice answers and so on? And say if you require a response, because sometimes you want to ask a question, but it's not a requirement, you can say yes or no here as well. And once you've created this, you save it, and that uh, little question is going to come up with the application as well. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the job board, the dashboard. Sorry. Finally, let's go back there. I want to go back to the assistant center, and I want to show you the same options as for the job seeker. <clears throat> we want to make sure that the employer is knowing that they can email. Their questions contact us deliver the live there directly and they can or they do have options in that learning center to do the employer courses. They can view the videos or they can read if they prefer to read the transcriptions of the courses. Okay. And that is it for now. Do we have any other questions? I have a question and I'm probably getting ahead of myself, um, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to find out if that's going to be something that's going to be covered. Um, previously, uh, one one of uh, the participants said something about a CRM, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm assuming that that means that you're able to go in and look at the employers and see what types of jobs that they have available. What we did was that, you know, WorkSource Georgia, the portal is so um, robust, there are so many parts to it. What we've tried to do is chunk it out and provide trainings for you in the different sections at different times. So it's not going to be too much for you to see all at the same time. CRM is one of the uh, trainings that are sessions that are going to be coming up. Um, I send the invites out. If it is that you didn't get one, you speak with your manager or your supervisor so you can, you know, try to get that uh, uh, scheduled um, so you can be able to attend one of those sessions. So, yes, it is something that's going to come up and yes, we are going to cover. All of that information as much as we can, I should say, within that session. Anything else? No. Okay, so next week we'll be exploring the staff side of the house. 
all of this information with the job seekers and the employers, what the staff does as staff to further assist um, um, job seekers and employers. Um, we will look at the accounts and show how staff provides and record services for the job seekers and employers and how we assist in the whole labor exchange process as staff. This, this week we are looking at it from the job seeker perspective, the employer perspective, and next time, next week, Thursday, at the same time, we are going to be doing from the staff perspective. Okay, and that's it for now. Anything else? Final, final chance. Dana, Dana, this is fake. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Oh, I, I got on about seven minutes late. So after everyone leaves, can you give me, or can I just come in at another time, or can you just briefly tell me what I missed? I don't think I missed a lot, but I was I didn't sign on until seven after. We are Before going to, can. yeah, yeah. We did record it, and we are going to be make it, making it available at some point in the future. And we do have a session at 2 o'clock this afternoon. If you want to come on for the first 7 minutes, see what you miss. Okay, I'll do that. Basically, right. It should basically be the same thing, but you know, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay, 2 o'clock. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Faye. All right. But okay, well, if nobody else has any other questions, we're going to go ahead and end the session. Thank you all again for attending. We hope that you were able to learn something even more. We know sometimes things get gets added on. We're going to keep you informed of any updates. Um, but thank you for joining us and see you next time.